Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Height, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome Mary Schmidt Carter, who serves as CCCC's Director of Secondary Partnerships. Mary was born outside of Syracuse, New York, and attended the Sunny University at Buffalo. She has a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in school counseling. Mary moved to North Carolina immediately after graduate school and worked as a high school guidance counselor for four years before moving to the college level with Fayetteville Tech and Sand Hills Community Colleges before settling in at CCCC. She and her husband, Justin, have a dog, Abraham Lincoln Schmarter. Mary, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pleased to be here. Well, Mary, please share with our audience about your job and your duties here at the college. Well, I've been with the college just over a year now, and I oversee the Career and College Promise Program. So my official title is the Director of Secondary Partnerships, but I pretty much just tell everybody that I run our high school program. So I'm very grateful to be here. Well, what is Career and College Promise? I'm so glad you asked, RV. Career and College Promise is a initiative through the state of North Carolina. It came about in January of 2012, and it's basically a program that offers tuition-free college courses to high school students. So students in the 11th and 12th grade, they have to meet certain eligibility criteria, but they have the opportunity to come in. It can be online, it can be a seated course, but they have the opportunity to take a variety of college courses without paying anything for tuition. What does CCP look like at CCCC? CCP at CCCC, which is difficult to say too many times, is huge. We're really excited that the program continues to grow here. We currently have over 1,700 students that are current high school students also taking college classes with us this fall. We see no end in sight for that enrollment, and we're just absolutely thrilled uh, to offer this opportunity to so many students. Well, I know that uh, one of the ways that these students come to us is through a program called CCW, Central Carolina Works. Can you tell our audience a little about that program? Absolutely. Central Carolina Works uh, was implemented about three years ago, the fall of 2014. We were lucky to partner with several business and industry leaders uh, to provide extra opportunities kind of above and beyond what CCP normally offers. So the very best part about what we do is that we have the Central Carolina Works Advisors. Uh, they're available in all of our high schools and they're basically an extension of my office. So I'm not available to visit every high school and meet with every student. So my Central Carolina Works Advisors really have the opportunity to provide that in-depth advising for the students. Um, it's an amazing opportunity. Most colleges do not have this as an option, uh, so we're very, very thankful for the Central Carolina Works program to be able to help uh, provide the funding for these folks. It's incredible. And as part of Central Carolina Works, uh, these counselors are in our public schools in our three county area, but what about for those uh, private schools or those students who may not be in a public school, uh, how do they qualify for the program? So students that are not in one of our public schools uh, mostly work with me. Uh, my personal caseload is to work with our private and charter school students from within our service area. And then occasionally we do have students from Wake County or Johnson County that choose to come to CCCC to take a course. And I generally work directly with those students. Well, let's talk about some of the pathways that students can enroll in at CCCC. Absolutely. We're very lucky to offer three different ways that students can get involved in the CCP program. Uh, the number one way, the first option, is for students to enroll in transfer courses. So these are courses, they're your general education courses. Things like English, math, history, maybe a foreign language. Uh, those courses are a great option for students because they do receive AP weight on the high school transcript, which is fantastic. Um, and it's a really great way for students to just get a general start on what their plans might be after high school. Our second option for enrollment are the Career and Technical Education, or CTE courses, and those are my bread and butter. I really think that we offer a lot to our students uh, to get them exposed to different career options. 
So I guess that we probably have about 30 different programs, and I will not try to list them for you, um, but they're things like welding, criminal justice, cosmetology, culinary. They're things that we encourage the students to explore um, and get some on-the-job training. Some of them do involve apprenticeship options. It's, it's really just a great way to expose the students to some different career fields. It gives them a chance to explore. And then our third option that we're really proud of are our cooperative innovative high schools. We currently have three early college programs. There's one in each of our service area counties. And those allow students typically to complete an associate degree at the same time as their high school diploma. So it's really even above and beyond what our normal CCP students get. The students at the early college take classes as early as their ninth grade year um, and really just get an incredible amount of access to our college courses with the intent of completing that degree for free. Well, it's an exciting program that these students can not only get their high school education, but also get a college education at the same time. And I would think that that's one of the more attractive parts of the program uh, when, when you're speaking to parents. Absolutely. I think it's really important to get parents on board. Um, and whenever I speak with a group of students and parents, I remind them that there's a, a really important TV friendly F word, and that is free. So it's really incredible for students to be able to take these classes for no tuition money whatsoever. So for example, English 111, a very typical three credit course. They'll not pay any money for that through CCP. If they were to come to Central Carolina after graduation, it would cost them about $230 for that English course. If they're taking it at NC State, you're talking about 800 and Campbell's about 2000. That's not to say that NC State and Campbell are not fabulous programs, because they are. Um, we partner with a lot of different colleges in the, in the area that we're really proud of. But if you're going to take the same course anywhere, we really think it's a great idea to save some of that money. Um, and if you can do that during high school and not pay any tuition for that course, then we think that's really the very best option for students. And I wanted to ask you about the college situation. So a lot of your students, when they graduate from this program, do have the opportunity to go on to a four-year school, I would think. Absolutely. We really encourage the students to consider staying at Central Carolina Community College. Depending on how many credits they have, they're often well on their way to an associate degree. So we talk to students about the financial importance of starting with CCP, getting those classes for free, staying at the college to take the rest of their associate degree program for a, a more minimal cost, and then by all means transferring on to NC State, ECU, Duke, wherever it is that they want to go after graduation. So they can certainly get a head start on that bachelor degree, uh, but we think that remaining at CCCC for a little bit is, is really helpful as well. Excellent. Now, how would students go about getting involved in the program? Well, as we talked about before, the Central Carolina Works Advisors are in all of our high schools. So for our public school students, that is really their, their best access to the course, is to talk to their CCW advisor. So we have three high schools in Chatham County, we have four high schools in Harnett County, and two in Lee County, so nine altogether. All those students have to do is ask to be put in touch with that CCW advisor. Most of the time, the advisors are located in the guidance office at the high school. Uh, occasionally, they're located elsewhere in the school, but that office would certainly know how to put a student in touch with their advisor. So the advisor will talk with the student one-on-one. -on -one. They'll look at their high school transcript and their test scores, um, make sure that we're finding something that the student is an appropriate fit for, um, and really kind of offer all of those support services. If we have students at the early college, uh, those programs are handled basically through each county office through the LEA, um, and there's usually an application process for the early colleges um, during the spring of each year for the following year. And again, if we've got students that are at private schools or outside our service area, they can pretty much just contact me directly. Well, obviously the students know a lot about the program uh, through the counselors. What would you like to say to the parents of students who may be considering or on the fence about the program? I think it's really just a great opportunity for students to explore something earlier, basically. Uh, one of the examples that I use is that it's very difficult if you think you want to be a chef and you apply to Johnson & Wales and then 
you know, you get there and you suddenly realize that, gee, being a chef is not what I thought it was going to be. So we like to give the students the exposure to those options while they're still in high school. And if they decide that they don't like something, that is still a very valuable life lesson for them. And the benefit is that they've not spent any tuition money, they've not gone off to school and, and kind of lost both time and money to have that realization that they don't necessarily like what they thought they like. So it's a great way for them to get some exposure to different careers, different classes, um, and really kind of help hone in what their uh, goals will be after they graduate high school. If a student starts in one track, can they change to another track or are they pretty much uh, have to stick with the program they get into? We really encourage students to stick with the program that they start with uh, just because we, we want to offer really structured opportunities for them. However, these students are 15 and 16 years old and we understand that they will change their mind. So as long as a student can have a convincing reason and say, you know, I know last semester I wanted to be in law enforcement and now I want to be a nurse, we will certainly work with that student. They're not tied down once they start the program. And how can our listeners receive more information on the Career in College Promise program? There are several different ways to get more information on the program. Probably the easiest thing to do is have our listeners uh, visit the CCCC website. So if they go to cccc.edu, there's a search box at the top and they can just type in Career in College Promise. That will take them right to our site, talks about the courses we offer, talks about who our advisors are at each of the high schools, um, and additional contact information. And what makes CCCC such a special place? I really enjoy working at CCCC because I think that our focus is always learning first and students first. So anytime there's an issue, we really try to go to bat for our students. There's a lot of support systems, um, advising opportunities that are here that I've not necessarily seen at other colleges. So I'm pleased to be here. Well, thank you, Mary. And we will return to 4C Visions after these messages. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. And then from this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. And then we're gonna turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly and unconventional methods uh, okay, what else? common. This is their world. Nothing. Then they die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make more. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. 
but I, it was only like five seconds and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Welcome back to 4C Vision. Today we welcome Sarah Deal, who serves as the Project Activity Director for the Carolina Works First in the World Validation Grant, awarded through the Department of Education. She is a doctoral student at North Carolina State University studying higher education administration. Sarah's research interests include student success interventions, college access, community colleges, and rural students. She earned her bachelor's in communication from the State University of New York at Buffalo before earning her master's in higher education and student affairs at The Ohio State University. She worked at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill from 2009 to 2014 in housing and first year experience before coming to Central Carolina Community College in 2014 to lead CCCC success coaching operations. Sarah, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, share with our audience about your job and your duties at the college. Sure. Uh, so I manage a grant that the Central Carolina was awarded in 2015. It's the largest grant that any community college in our state has ever been awarded. And so I manage it across the 10 schools that are involved. Well, before we get to that, Sarah, Talk a little bit about when you first came to the college and some of the duties that you've had here before uh, taking that position. Sure. So when I left the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, I only applied to CCCC um, because of the work that they were doing here with students. So at the time, every student received a success coach. And what that means is they had one person at the college that could help them through everything that they were experiencing, positive, things that they needed help with. Um, all of that, and that's what our grant, the second grant, is based on, but that's why I came here. Well, what does First in the World mean, and what is the grant all about? Sure. So in 2009, President Obama at the time put out a declaration that he wanted the United States to be first in the world in education again, hence the name of our grant. Um, and he really wanted to increase completion rates, degree attainment at community colleges. Um, and when they went back to the Department of Ed, Education, and looked for evidence about what worked, they didn't find much at the time. So they put together this group of grants that would um, look and collect data on students and what really works for them so that we can put more money towards those things. So our grant is using success coaching model that Central Carolina has been doing for a few years. Um, and we have implemented that across 10 schools to measure whether that actually works for students or whether we just think that it works. And so that, that does that pretty much sum up the pro, uh, what the grant is all about in terms of uh, its purpose? And mm -hmm. great. Well, what, who is involved with the grant? Sure. So we have 10 North Carolina community colleges um, out of 58 in the state, so about 20%. Um, and they all volunteered to, to go with us on this journey. So I will name them in case they're watching. Um, so we have from west to east, Southwestern Community College, Isothermal Community College, Cleveland Community College, Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute, Randolph Community College, Central Carolina Community College, College of the Albemarle, Roanoke Chowan Community College, Pamlico Community College, and Carteret Community College. Okay, now what does a success coach do and how does it benefit students? So on the first day of class when faculty are busy getting their classes together and taking attendance and uh, getting their syllabus together and you know, your admissions counselors are registering students, a success coach is reaching out to students and welcoming them to the college. We're so glad you're here. We're really excited. We're here to help you be successful here. Um, and then they build that positive relationship with students and check in on them to make sure their grades are good, they're attending class help navigate anything that's happening at the college that maybe they, they don't know how to manage. I know I didn't know how to manage that when I was a, a first year student. Well, I know that's a tremendous help to them. Now, what early indicators of success do we show? Sure, so we have our success coaches prioritize students that they see as the most at risk. So say a student hasn't been to class in a week or their grades are dropping. So that's where the success coaches start. 
And when we look at our fall of 2016 to spring of 2017 information, the students that received a success coach did about three percentage points better wow. than our students that didn't receive a success coach. So that's not, you know, we're not ready to draw any conclusions yet, but it's definitely trending in the right direction that we would like to see. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your hopes as to what can be accomplished through the First in the World grant? Sure. So we have this incredible opportunity to use funds from the Department of Education to test this out and pay for 21 professional success coaches across the state. What I would really like to see, um, and it, it, this has begun already, is for the other 48 community colleges in North Carolina to adopt this as a best practice and for our state to fund enough resources that every student can have a success coach. Because right now, one coach has about 300 students, and we haven't finished adding students wow. yet. So that's a lot to manage, and we really want to make sure we can reach every student in the way that they need. Uh, are the students aware that there are success coaches in terms of uh, is it easy for a student to fall between the cracks or do you pretty much uh, are able to get to most of the students? The students receive communication from us no matter what. Whether they choose to respond back is up to them. But every student that has a success coach can log into our technology system called Aviso um, where they can see a lot of information, but they can also see who their success coach is and email them or text them through that or call them or any of the ways they'd like to get in touch with their success coach. And of course the success coach is gonna reach out pretty consistently throughout the semester. And I would think that these students, uh, when you hear the success stories that they've yes. achieved, must be very gratifying to the success coaches. It is, it is. It's, a it's an incredibly rewarding job and really the reason why I came here. Wonderful. Now how can our listeners receive more information on the First in the World grant and about CCCC's success coach program? Sure. So our website is cccc.edu slash FITW for First in the World. Um, so you can go there. You can see the contacts at every one of our 10 schools. Happy to reach out to any of those. Um, and then in 2020, which seems like a long ways away, you'll be able to see our results published um, through the Department of Education. Great. Sarah, what makes Central Carolina Community College such a special place in your mind? Well, so as, as Mary shared a few minutes ago, it's really about the focus on students and student success. Um, I've never worked a place that was more uh, dedicated to making sure that students don't have to experience any unnecessary barriers to their education. And in addition, um, the people are really fantastic, right? I get to work with people like you. Um, my boss is great. Really feel like I get to do my best work every day um, in a working environment. And of course, it doesn't help, or it doesn't hurt at all that I get to share an office with Mary, who is my best friend. We attended the same college together. I was going to say, you may want to uh, tell our uh, viewers about your relationship with Mary because you've been friends for a long time. A long time. She was the matron of honor in my wedding just a few months ago. Wow. But Mary and I were assigned as best friends our first day of being orientation leaders. And we were told to meet each other and then introduce ourselves to the rest of the group. And that was, I think, 14 years ago. Well, I'd like to ask you, too, about your uh, graduate degree. You're yeah. working on your uh, doctorate. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So my doctorate is focused on um, research in higher education, so things like what we're doing with this grant. Um, some courses that I'm taking right now are about finance in higher education. Um, we've taken other classes such as organizational theory, looking at how organizations work, what's good about that, what's not as great about that and how to fix those problems. Um, and at the end, we'll have to write that long paper called your dissertation, which is far enough out that I don't have to worry about it yet. Well, and I know that you were at uh, UNC Chapel Hill for mm -hmm. a time, uh, but it was kind of a different field from what you're doing now. Right? Very. Talk about that transition and why the change. Well, I'm pretty sure if you asked my supervisors at Chapel Hill, they would tell you that they told me I was nuts. Why would you leave Ohio State and then Chapel Hill and go to a community college when all you've ever known are these elite four-year schools? And again, the reason was the students and the people that work here. Uh, and I feel like I got to do what I really wanted to do, which was help students on a daily basis in a really intense way. Chapel Hill is a great program, and really students are likely to succeed there no matter what. Right. Um, at Central Carolina, I actually actively help students get to Carolina that may not have gone there otherwise. Isn't that exciting? It is. It really is. 
as far as being a success coach, uh, what do you think is the greatest challenge for a success coach? Contact information. We need people's accurate phone numbers. <laughs> um, so sometimes we get parents on the phone. We don't tell them too much information, but um, update your phone number if you're a student and you're watching because we'd really like to get in touch with you. Uh, but most of the time when we do get a hold of students, their response is, I'm so glad someone is watching out for me. I didn't know that there was somebody that would you know, care for me that way. Are, are success coaches uh, primarily in community colleges or do they go to senior colleges as well? As far as I know, we only have success coaches in community colleges. There are other um, like positions, so like an academic advisor, but our primary function as success coaches is not to get you registered for classes. We can do that, um, but our primary focus is to help you navigate the college experience. So. Well, it's an exciting time, and we certainly wish for the uh, First in the World program much success, and Thank we're you. excited at Central Carolina Community College to be a part of that. Um, we have a lot of innovative programs here at Central Carolina Community College mm -hmm. that I hope that our viewers will uh, check us out. Uh, go to our website at www.cccc.edu, or call us, or better yet, come by to see us. I'll be here. We look forward to having you. Sarah, we thank you for being with thank us today, you. and we thank our viewers for being with us on 4C Visits.